Um, in, in, in this context, oblique has the meaning of like slanted, not, not straight, but slanted. So oblique asymptotes in um, like previously in other textbooks, they used to be called slant asymptotes. Right, so we talked about vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes. Well, it turns out you could also have an asymptote that's diagonal, slanted, or oblique. Okay, now when do you get an oblique asymptote? Remember here we said if the numerator has a higher degree, there is no horizontal asymptote? That's true. However, if it's higher in the numerator by one degree, then it has an oblique asymptote. So if the numerator has a higher degree by one, there is an oblique asymptote, okay? So for example, f of x is 3x to the 4 plus 7x squared over x cubed minus 2, right? So you see here, higher on the top than on the bottom, no horizontal, but if it's higher by one, then there is a slant asymptote, oblique asymptote. Okay, how do we find the oblique asymptote? You have to use synthetic division to divide the numerator by the denominator, and then the depressed polynomial is the oblique asymptote, so you ignore any remainder. Okay? All right, so let's take a look at this one. Um, can this be factored? No. No, it can't be factored because the factors of 8 are 1, 8, and 2, and 4, right? So it can't be factored. Okay, fine. Um, so now, let's see. Um, let's find the domain. It's all real numbers minus what? Negative 3, okay. Vertical asymptote, the x plus 3 doesn't cancel with anything on top, so this is going to be x equals negative 3, okay. Now, um, how about horizontal asymptote? Does this have a horizontal asymptote? No. Um, so if I ask you for horizontal asymptote, you just say none. This does have an oblique asymptote. So, um, higher by one, oblique. So now, to find the oblique asymptote, we have to do synthetic division, right? So here we go. On the outside, what number do I put? Uh, this one, x plus 3 equals 0, so negative 3. Okay. Inside, I put the coefficients of this numerator, so 1, 1, negative 8. All right, so go ahead and do the synthetic division for this here. 1, negative 3, negative 2, 6, negative 2, right? Okay, so the remainder here, you just throw it away. You don't need it. Okay. This is the depressed polynomial, right? So if I had started with x squared, now this is going to be x minus 2. y equals x minus 2. This is the oblique asymptote. Okay? Now, how do you graph y equals x minus 2? You, just, you graph it just like you did in the algebra days. Um, all right, so let's let's go ahead and graph all of our asymptotes here. We have one at x equals negative three right there. Okay, we have an oblique asymptote here, x minus two. So um, y-intercept is negative two, and then the slope is one. So you go up one over one. Okay. All right, um, any zeros here? How do you find the zeros? 
Huh? That's another asymptote. Asymptotes are actually imaginary lines, so they could cross each other, and that's cool. Because they're imaginary lines. Right. So to find the zeros, we're going to set the numerator equal to zero. X squared plus X minus 8 equal to 0. Okay, we said you can't factor that. Is there another way to solve it? Start with a Q quadratic formula. Yes, that's what I was thinking as well. You read my mind. Okay, so X equals negative 1 plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4 times A times C. That becomes positive all over 2A. Okay, x equals negative 1 plus or minus the square root of, what is that, 17 over 2. Okay, so what number is that, for goodness sake? I have no clue. So, can you please take out your calculators and just do the math there. Negative 1 plus root 17 over 2, negative 1 minus root 17 over 2. So for x, we get 2.4 and negative 3.4. Um, all right, so 2.4, that's here. Again, not sending anybody to the moon with this. Given what you have, the, the, the calibration, somewhere between 2 and 3, you're good. All right, I'm not going to mark you down if it's like half a nanometer to the left or to the right. All right, and then negative 3.4, we're here. Okay. Now, take a look. Um, so here, we know that it's going to follow this asymptote right there, right? And then it's going to come over like this, all right? So it's going to follow this asymptote here, hit the zero, and then when it comes down, there is no horizontal, but there is an oblique asymptote for it to follow. Okay, now you follow the vertical asymptote again. You follow the vertical asymptote again here. It exited the screen up to the left of the asymptote. It will re-enter to the right of the asymptote. And now treat that oblique one as you would a horizontal almost. You know it's going to hit that zero, so it's going to look like this how cool is that like seriously though so make sure you know that when the exiting on and off the screen you follow that vertical asymptote now when you're doing your homework um try as much as possible to figure out what this graph looks without your calculator okay um and then hang on. this entire time when we're looking for vertical asymptotes I've been telling you okay does the denominator cancel no and none of them have canceled so far so it feels like it's a moot point however it is very very important that you check if the denominator cancels out because if the numerator and denominator have common terms and if there is a term in the denominator which can be eliminated Okay, then you don't get a vertical asymptote there. You get what we call a removable discontinuity, all right, which essentially is a tiny little hole like a puncture in the graph, okay? So take a look at this function here. Everywhere else, it's a very nice smooth graph except for this one at x equals, you know, this number. You've got that tiny little hole. Most of the time when you graph it on your calculators, you can't even see it because it doesn't show it's that tiny. It's literally like a needle puncture. Okay, so let's take a look at this one right here. Um, like I said, it's always good practice to solve, uh, to factor these first. So the top factors as this. The bottom will factor as x minus 3, x plus 2, okay? Now, let's think about domain. For domain, we go to the, new, uh, the denominator, 
And the points which will make the zero are three and negative two. Yeah, exactly. So the domain is all real numbers minus three and negative two. Okay? Now, vertical asymptote. All right? Let's go back here. Take a look at this thing here. You have x minus 3 here. Does that cancel with something on top? It does. So you know what? The x minus 3 doesn't give you a vertical asymptote. All right? What about the x plus 2? Does it cancel? The x plus 2 does not cancel. That thing is there for good. It is not going away. So from there, you get x equals negative 2. So then what about the x equals 3 then? Because it cancels, it gives you a removable discontinuity, which is a whole. All right? So we say, yes. So we say there is a whole at x equals 3. Yeah, there is not a vertical asymptote there. Now, let's, let's talk about this for a minute. Remember how I was saying yesterday that all of your vertical asymptotes have to show up in your domain, but not vice versa? This is what I meant. All of your, anytime you have a vertical asymptote, it must have come from the domain. But not everything in the domain is a vertical asymptote. Some of them are vertical asymptotes. Some of them are going to give you holes. All right? Having said that, once you do the removable discontinuity and the vertical asymptote together, you must have everything in your domain accounted for. Am I making sense to you guys or just to me? Because I'm making sense to me. But am I making sense to you? Almost? Okay. So look at this. Between your vertical asymptote and the removable discontinuity, whatever values you get, okay, they should account they should be accounted for fully in your domain. So whatever you get between these two, they must all show up in your domain. In other words, everything in your domain must show up again as a vertical asymptote or a whole. Okay, that's the best way to say it. Okay, if this was not 12, I would have said that first. Okay, like 9 a.m. tomorrow, that's how I will say it. Okay, now... Okay, so horizontal asymptote. Go back to the original function. All right, and y equals 1. So let's put that here. Vertical asymptote, I'm going to put that here. Okay. Now, this um, reduced function is x plus 3 x plus 2. Okay? Now look, there is a hole at x equals 3. Where is x equals 3? Right here. Right here. Somewhere here, there is a removable discontinuity. How do I know where it is? How do I know if it's here, 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 here? Well, I know. I am, I'm going to do the removable discontinuity first and then the zeros. Okay, so take a look here. At x equals 3, right, what, plug it in here and see what, it, what the value is, right? So what is that? It's 3 plus 3 over 3 plus 2, 6 over 5. Is that right? So what, how much is 6 over 5? Yeah. What's 6 over 5? It's like 1 point something, right? So at x equals 3 and 1 point something is where that hole in the graph is. Okay? Now, if there was a college professor here, or you know what, it doesn't, like, okay. My pre-calc classes know that this here, we do it in order to, you know, figure out where this is. Mathematically, you can't really 
write this anywhere and have evidence that you wrote it, okay? Like if there were math police, we would all be in big trouble because technically speaking, at x equals three, there is not a value, all right? So we know that it's close to this point. So technically, you really shouldn't show anybody that knows any math that you wrote this, all right? Um, so just like maybe like scribble it out when you do it, okay? However, um, you know, there's like a long calculus -y way to figure out where to put that removable discontinuity, okay? This is a cute little shortcut, but it's also my disclaimer. If anybody catches you, you didn't, you didn't get that from me, okay? Just putting Wait, that so out there. Put it like on the test will we get points off? Or? No, I won't give you points off. But like, you know, but I don't know you if anybody else catches you, is what I'm saying. So okay. Because I put x, we know that it's at x equals 3, right? So that's exactly it. I put x equals 3 into here. I get 6 over 5, and that's 1 point something, so right there. Okay? Now, okay, Jolie, any zeros here? We look at the numerator, x equals negative 3. All right, so what do you guys think? How is this going to look? Uh huh. That's gone forever. That's why it's called a removable discontinuity. Get it? We removed it. That's why it, the whole is called a removable discontinuity because you could literally remove it from the equation. All right. So, do you guys agree with me that this should look something like this? I think so. Because when it re enters, it's going to go here, pass through that discontinuity. Not through, but like, you know, include that hole like that. Okay? How does that sound? I think it sounds fantastic. Okay? All right. Um, so, all right. So for homework, all right, let me do one of these problems. Do you guys remember how to solve rational functions? Okay, so basically what we do is we multiply each term by the LCD. Okay? All right, look here. Um, you have here a fraction. The denominator is x minus 6. You have here, uh, it's a whole number, but we could make it over 1. All right, so between the 1 and the x minus 6, what would be the LCD? Okay, so the way you do it is you take one sample of each, right? And it would be the x minus 6. So you know what? I think I might leave this for next time. Let me stop here.